Welcome back to a new video, which will be much more tricky than previous ones, because we will be looking for our nearest neighbors, finally. Let's get back to a script where we have uh, 10 objects being instantiated, and let's create... Um, Let's actually store these objects into the array or into the list. Uh, so to do that, we need to, to use system.collections.generic. And then we need to, then we need to typecast game object. And then we need to declare a list of game objects. Let's say geos. Let's do list game object. Uh, and let's just add this game object into that list and let's make it public that we could see what's going on something is missing on something is of course um, okay so now we can try to see what's happening here. If we click run, there are our game objects and they are being stored in the list. So we can uh, see where each of these objects are. Okay, the next thing to do is to, um, as we now stored these objects, we have information about their positions and we can loop uh, over them again and for each of them to find their nearest neighbors. To do that, we will be going, uh, opening up a new function. Let's say void. Um, void. Find neighbors, find nearest neighbors, find nearest neighbors, open closing brackets, and let's just loop proof, I just copying and pasting, and uh, now we can loop over these geos. Uh, but the problem with nearest neighbors is that for each of the object originally, uh, we need to loop over other objects. And that makes uh, to, be, uh, to, to find all nearest neighbors for all game objects in the scene, uh, it comes with a cost of n square uh, so, we need a second loop which would be inside this loop. Um, so, if we write like that, loop inside the loop, and if we change the index, let's say not i but j, it will be the right way to, to find objects because for all elements i, uh, it is looking in elements j all the time. And then I need one more thing to do because, uh, for example, at the beginning, i and j, it will be 0, 0. So it means that it will be finding um, not the nearest objects themselves, but... Um, but the element itself, uh, in in other ob in other words, it will be that nearest neighbor to the game object will be the game object uh, itself. So 
we need if statement here. If if i is not equal to j, then to proceed. Now, um, the interesting point is that um, we need, uh, as we talked at the very first tutorial, um, we need to define distances, uh, and the distance and the distance uh, can be calculated through um, um, through these vector vectors free. Uh, yes, so how we can do that? Um, firstly, we need the to minimize the distance because if we minimize the distance, then we can say that we find our nearest neighbor. So, if we write float min dist, and initially we need to assign a very large value, what is not expected to be um, in our list. So, let's say if we put, let's say just lots of um, numbers and it's 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 really large value. Um, the next step is to calculate uh, the distance between points i and j. How we can do that? Uh, let's just uh, start typing float uh, dist, which will be actual distance between them equals. Now we need to, uh, we can calculate distance by uh, subtracting two vectors and calculating uh, its magnitude. So, first vector would be position of first game object, and second vector will be position of another game object. So, how we can do that? Um, we can just write geos dot transform dot position and which geos it would be i yes because it's uh eight game object and then i can subtract j game object which is j like that so now this is this is uh, subtracted vector. Um, I can put into it into brackets and calculate magnitude, and this will be our distance, our actual distance uh, between point I and point J. So what we can do next is to um, to compare it with minimum distance. If it is larger, then the object is probably more further away than any of previously found objects. And if it is closer, then it's it's good because we're we finding new object. So, if statement comes here, if statement comes here, and here we can uh, check if this is less than min dist. If so, min dist can become equals dist. This is because uh, we found already object, and uh, um, and we just got it. So, but now we don't have anything about these these nearest neighbors. We found it already because it's at the end. It will be min dist. So, what we can do here is just to print these min distances. Uh, to see if uh, uh, if they are making some sense. So debug.log, it should be 10, uh, 10 distances. 
so we can just print out this mean distance mm, of this one. Yes. So if we get back here and just run, and nothing happens because I didn't call this function. So just after for loop, I can call it. And now I can run it. Okay, so now we got all these uh, all these distances. Some uh, some of them are two, one point nine, one point nine. Uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. So this this gives kind of um, idea um, how far away are each of these uh, of these neighbors when it is looking through. Uh, Another thing which I think I forgot because it finds the smallest distance now. I need to uh, to refresh this distance for every single point. So I need to move it here. And now it should be working for each object correctly. Clean. And okay, now it works better. So we have 0 0.4, 2.9, and so on. So now, what would be happening? What could be interesting um, is to um, so we got these these distances. So we we finally. Um, getting our nearest neighbors but the next thing is to to actually uh, to store these neighbors into array into list or something like that so that we could uh, later uh, loop over neighbors uh, to to actually find or to link them or something like that or just to get these distances. So that's that's basically it. That uh, so we will check um, in the next video how to store all these objects.